Okay, still few few students to join. Waiting for all of them. Waiting for everyone to join. Wait, we'll wait for a minute. all right guys so let us start now uh, others will join meanwhile probably so today's topic is the kinematics don't get intimidated by this drawing in front of you kinematics is not as difficult as this okay this is like application of kinematics it's a robotic arm so if you are good at kinematics probably you can design a nice robot okay all right so let us continue so as i said the last class yes yes we we have finished with units first chapter is over all of you have completed the assignment which i had given type in yes or no have you done the assignment okay all right fine so uh <clears throat> fine so we are going to start this topic kinematics write down now kinematics is basically it's a study of motion write down it is the study of motion without getting into the cause of the motion okay it is like i don't care about what is causing the motion i am just studying the motion of it all right i will just see how much it has traveled uh, with what velocity it is traveling and i will not care about the fact that from where the velocity is coming and uh, what is what is creating the acceleration how much force is acting on it all that will not be talking about here okay so things will be more clear if we talk about few examples right so for example this robotic arm if you see here although this type of complicated things will not study all right so you can see here i don't need to know that relative to this link that arm will rotate like this okay for that i don't need to know any cause it is constrained to move like that 
there's a constraint relation fine and this part hand can rotate about this axis fine even this can rotate about that axis so all these things i need to just know how they are constrained to move fine and then i will also understand if link 2 is moving with certain speed link 3 is moving with certain speed then with what speed link 5 and 6 should be moving there has to be some sort of relation okay so these kind of constraint movement will result in the concept of kinematics and we'll be just studying the motion of an object okay so i'll give you another example have you ever heard of uh, that automatic cleaning machine uh, which uh, which nowadays it has come in india also so there are these small robots circular disc sort of rotate uh, you know robots which can just trace the path on your floor and will clean it up entire thing have you heard of them right so right rombas so these these will consume the power also okay so what will happen is suppose my uh, my uh, you know intention is to clean the entire floor okay floor will have a lot of uh, obstacles tables are there chairs are there sofa is there center table dining table everything is there bed is also there so these robots if i just design it in such a way that every time it hits some obstacle it takes a turn and start moving in another direction okay so if i just design it like that the moment it hits something it rotates itself a little bit and starts moving all right this is like the basic of the design wherein you're just making sure as soon as it hits it should it should it should avoid going in the direction where obstacle is there that is all second step what you can do is you can put some sort of ultrasonic sensors when the sensors throw the ultrasonic wave forward and it comes back the robot will calculate how much time it has taken for the ultrasonic wave to reach back so using that the robot will calculate that the uh, the obstacle is let's say 1 second ahead okay so the robot will not move in that direction then fine so this is second step but then in both first step and second step you are not making sure that same place where robot is cleaning the robot doesn't come back again it might happen that robot is just confined to one area and keeps on coming back to the same place again and again fine so an intelligent robot or an expensive one will be one which will keep track of where all i have already been i will not go to the same place again with all the sensors in place okay so by just you know analyzing the motion and how far the obstacle is how fast the robot is moving i will be able to intelligently design all the functions of the robot okay so kinematics application is much wider and it is it can be it is also used in uh, organ replacement not all the organ the hands and limbs basically okay so all these things taken care of there now i am not getting into debate of how it is why it is when it is because it is not part of your curriculum okay i just told you so that you understand that these are the application of kinematics fine so let us get into the chapter actually what it is about fine so uh, kinematics chapter can be divided broadly into two sections acha by the way have you heard of kinematics kinematics word have you heard of which chapter which chapter okay so kinematics name is not there as a chapter name okay in fact kinematics is basically a section which consists of two chapters 
in your syllabus the first chapter is motion in 1d okay so motion in 1d chapter number 1 and second chapter is motion in 2d fine so you have already studied the basics of motion in 1d in class 9th okay you already heard of it in class 9 wherein you used to apply the uh, equations of motion v is equal to u plus at s equal to ut plus half at square all that right all that we were making sure that uh, it is moving in one straight line only and that is the motion in 1d motion in 2d little bit we have already done in the bridge program the projectile motion was an example of motion in 2d okay now same motion in 1d was there in class 9th again it has come up but then now that it has come up our uh, when it has come up in class 11th there is no limit up to which the difficulty can go up to fine it is up to you what level you want to stop you want to prepare only for the school exam there is only one limit up to which you can solve problems fine if you want to prepare for cet another level neat and je another level if you want to prepare for je advanced there is no level you just keep on uh, you know doing various types of problems fine so now it is much more open ended so we need to study it in a much more broader fashion and understand all the finer nuances that are there in motion in 1d chapter okay so motion in 2d since it is chapter number 2 will not uh, talk about it much right now so motion in 1d can be classified into three parts what is kinematics analysis of motion or study of motion fine so the first part is the is the algebraic analysis algebraic analysis we'll be analyzing the motion using algebra or using the equations that is algebraic analysis fine then second part of the chapter will be graphical analysis okay using graphs and all we'll be analyzing the motion of an object okay third is basically calculus oriented so in class 9th we never worried about the fact that acceleration can also change so when acceleration also changes you cannot use equations of motion you you learn that anyways so then you need to use the calculus approach by the way have you done the basic calculus in the uh, maths bridge program basics i think is covered already right so yes we'll be using that to study the motion in the calculus approach topic fine yes limits derivatives and integral also little bit so now that kinematics is a study of the motion itself so here i am not going to assume that you have studied anything in class 9th we are going to start from the basics all right so if you think that your class 9th was not so great here is an opportunity to correct that it is up to you if you want to do that okay so if we have to study the motion by any means graphical calculus or algebraic we need to understand what are the variables which we will be using to analyze the motion okay so if we understand our variables then we'll be using the variables only to understand the uh, you know what the object is doing fine so introduction of variable is the first topic of the chapter 
then we'll start studying it algebraically graphically and calculus oriented approach write down introduction of motion variables tell me a few examples motion variables anyone okay velocity acceleration displacement very good what else velocity acceleration displacement time time is very important variable okay don't forget that then is that it all right so the first variable we are talking about motion in 1d aditya not the circular motion so introduction of motion variable in motion in 1d okay all right so uh, here it is all of you scalar variables also yes why not fine the first variable the most basic variable is position or the location okay so initial location if i don't know how will i get the final location suppose i tell you that displacement is 100 meters tell me where the object is you will not be able to because you don't know which was the initial location if initial location was x equal to 10 and you tell me the displacement is plus 100 the answer is 110 if initial location was 100 and displacement is plus 100 the final location will be 100 plus 100 200 fine so initial location is the first variable okay most of the time we assume initial location or position to be zero that is our assumption but you should know that you are assuming it fine so initial location is represented by variable x not in motion in 1d it is represented by variable x not fine now x not can be greater than 0 x not can be less than 0 or x not can be equal to 0 so it can have any value x not belongs to a real number set it can be anything okay next variable is time write down what i can say about time any constraint on value of t time is represented by letter small t which you know already what i can say about t can i say t is less than 0 is it possible t less than 0 t less than 0 not possible everyone t less than 0 okay what is t equal to 0 t equal to 0 means what t equal to 0 means what starting time what is a starting time start of the universe starting time or initial time is start of universe t equal to 0 start of your experiment start of the motion you are saying t equal to 0 is start of your motion so whatever is was happening before your experiment or before your motion that is what time that doesn't exist whatever is happening before your experiment or your motion that is negative time only that is negative time only before suppose i assume that right now t equal to 0 so when i started the class 
some time back that is negative time so t can be less than 0 but it moves in only forward direction so how can i write it mathematically right time will always increase but time can be less than 0 also according to what you take as 0 but it will always increase so what does it mean mathematically what should i write correct it means that change in time delta t should be always greater than 0 it can never be even equal to 0 delta t delta t cannot be equal to 0 also it has to be greater than 0 delta t t can be less than 0 delta t cannot be okay change in time getting it right distance distance is represented i mean it's length basically so you can say l or any other letter you can use x y z so displacement l or yeah you can say d also what is the constraint with it can distance be negative can the length be negative it cannot be negative so distance covered should always be greater than or equal to 0 it can be equal to 0 also if i am standing at a point i am not moving anywhere distance covered is 0 okay then comes displacement what is displacement all of you have learned this anyways displacement is basically shortest distance shortest distance between two points right and it's a vector quantity it's a vector quantity isn't it we have learned about vectors already so vector quantity is represented by an arrow like this this arrow connects initial and final point fine this is a displacement vector now displacement actually gives us more information than distance for example if i tell you that i have traveled a distance of 100 km you will have no idea where i will be okay if i just tell you 100 km i have traveled a distance i could have been back to the same location but if i tell you the displacement is 100 km in the east direction then you will exactly know where i am fine so the displacement carries more information than distance fine all right no mother no no fine so displacement can it be can it have any value displacement by the way is represented as s can s belongs to all real numbers it can have any value it can be negative depending on which direction you are taking positive the opposite of that direction will be negative isn't it correct so this is displacement all right now speed what is speed rate at which rate at which distance is covered isn't it 
So can speed be negative? Can it be negative? S speed. No, right? Speed, let's say I represent by u. u will always be greater than or equal to zero. Fine. There is a concept of average speed also. Average speed is basically equal to total distance divided by total time. Okay, so suppose you have traveled a distance of 100 kilometers in two hours, your average speed is 50 kilometer per hour. What does it mean? If your average speed is 50 kilometer per hour, does it mean that you are traveling at 50 kilometer per hour? Does it mean that? It doesn't mean that, okay? In between, my speed might be 20 km per hour, then 60 km per hour, then 70, then again 10, like that. My speed might be continuously fluctuating, okay? But on an average, my speed is total distance by total time, which is coming out to be 50 km per hour. So if I traveled at a constant speed of 50, then same distance will be covered in the same time. This is what it means. This is the speed and now the velocity. The velocity as you know already is rate at which displacement happens. Okay, so the velocity, there is a concept of average of that also, average velocity. What will be average velocity? Total displacement. divided by total time. Okay, this is your average velocity. Fine. So these are the concepts that are very basic concepts and we are going to use these variables to understand few types of motion. Okay, and uh, now when you're traveling in a car, Okay, the velocity keeps on changing, but this is the average velocity. So what is that velocity which you see every now and then when you look at the speedometer, speedometer, the velocity which is showing there, what it is? Is it average velocity which is showing there or what? Instantaneous velocity? That is instantaneous velocity. What is instantaneous velocity? What is present velocity, current velocity? instantaneous velocity, what does it mean? At that moment, at that moment, what is the velocity? What do you mean by at that moment? Velocity is rate at which displacement is covered. So at that moment, if you just talk about at that moment, the displacement will not, won't happen at a particular time itself, right? At a particular time, Displacement won't happen. So in reality, you have done the limits, right? In bridge program, you've done the limits. Okay. So what happens is that instantaneous velocity, let me write like this. Instantaneous velocity V it will be equal to limit limit delta t tends to zero delta s divided by delta t 
delta s is a displacement delta t is a time when you are considering very small amount of time a very small amount of displacement then take the average of average velocity for that is very very small interval of time that is your instantaneous velocity so this limit will actually result in the derivative of the displacement So this is the instantaneous velocity. I hope no doubts. No doubts. Fine. So let us see uh, the you know graphically certain situations. How does it look like? We are right now assuming that acceleration is zero. Okay. I am talking about uniform motion. right so for uniform motion i just need these variables i do not need acceleration because it is zero okay so for uniform motion we need above variables only so graphically graphically if i if i plot a graph between let us say the uh, the displacement and time always remember i am talking about an object that moves in a straight line okay this is a chapter where motion is happening in a straight line like this okay this is how motion is happening okay so at times in our book the x axis is on the y coordinate x axis is nothing but x coordinate of the motion where the it is happening all right and the x axis is actually time time axis time also changes fine so now tell me is what kind of motion this is is this a straight line motion or not is this straight line or not okay many of you are saying no many of you are saying no the answer is yes it is a straight line motion if it happens the reason is you know the coordinate this is your x coordinate so all you have to find out okay t equal to 0 x coordinate is where at this time this is the x coordinate at that time what is the x coordinate then x coordinate decreases there what is the x coordinate and then what happens is the particle is uh, basically moving like this it goes straight like that comes back along the same straight line then goes back so all that happens along one straight line only okay now tell me what is the biggest problem in this graph this problem this uh, graph in reality can never exist what is the issue anyone what's the issue in the graph so non uniform is fine object need not have uniform velocity isn't it yes aritra got it correct shashank shashwat also more than 1x at a particular t very good even that is also fine time is going back so you can see in this zone time is decreasing time can never decrease it can't even remain constant fine so this graph mathematically may be fine but physically doesn't make any sense fine so this graph is not proper fine this doesn't exist all of you understand right tell me what is happening here can you describe the motion little bit can you describe the motion 
in this case anyone describe it properly anyone it is accelerating acha retarding fine completely you have to okay velocity becomes constant after some time is that correct after some time what happens to the velocity after some time what happens to the velocity okay listen here listen here so that's the problem you know you have you should not lose the common sense and you should always uh, you know be ready to apply your thoughts so here at when t equal to something value of x was 0 so when x was 0 t was not equal to 0 that is fine then suddenly it starts moving very fast so you can see that for in a very small amount of time the x value has gone from here to here very quickly it moved then in the same amount of time you can see this this is the amount of time it has taken now in the same amount of time now the change in the value of x is lesser and it is decreasing fine so for the same amount of time the value of displacement is keeps on decreasing so the average velocity keeps on decreasing because in every 2 second it is covering lesser distance lesser and lesser and you can see when it reaches here no matter how much time is changing the value of x is not changing so what does it mean in this zone if x is not changing with time what does it mean about the velocity the velocity is zero it has stopped velocity is zero okay velocity is zero not constant i mean which zero is a constant but i know what do you mean by saying that is constant so it is zero so the biggest mistake the student does in graphically analyzing the kinematics is that they look at the curve and think that this is the path this is not the path this is not the path the particle is following this you should be very clear because x axis is time it is time it is not some spatial coordinates so if it graph is between x and y then you can say that is the path but right now it is moving in a straight line and the graph or x versus t looks like that getting it fine so this is clear now let's see how velocity will look like in a graph see this chapter has very little theory getting it this chapter has just uh, you know two three equations are given to you and straight away problem solving so do not expect stories now all the physics chapter going to be like that we need to just see scenario 1 scenario 2 what will happen this and that that's all but then yeah varieties of problems have gone up very hugely this is x this is time let us say okay now if i say that this is the graph not that let us go like this is this graph fine is there any issue with the graph particle is moving in a straight line is this fine no it doesn't go backwards at the top no 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 it's like this is it fine now right this is fine so can you describe the motion a bit little bit can you describe what is actually happening here initial velocity is what initially 
when the particle has started from here. Initially, the velocity is zero. Right? Initially, velocity is zero. So, for some time, the value of x is constant, and then suddenly it starts increasing and velocity keeps on increasing. For equal interval of time, I'm covering more and more distance. Fine. Now, no, you can't say linearly increasing velocity or not. You can't say that, okay? You can only say that it is increasing. Linear or not, you cannot say, but just by looking at the graph. You need to know equation of the graph also. Anyways, so suppose this is point A, this is point B. Fine. You need to graphically show how the average velocity looks like. Where is the average velocity? If I give, I have given you the location of A and location of B. Graphically, you have to show how the average velocity looks like. All of you. Average velocity is total distance by total time. All of you drawn, see, you are telling an algebraic this thing. Graphically, you have to show. Graphically, understand? In the graph, how it looks like. All right, so all of you are done. I was asking graphically average velocity how it looks like. All right, so now here it is. Focus here, all of you. What is x2 minus x1? A displacement. This is a displacement. All of you understand that this will be the displacement. Right? And this is the amount of time that will be taken. That is the amount of time from point A to point B. This much time will be taken. This is T2. This is T1. This is X1. This is X2. Right? Clear, right? Okay, so the average velocity is basically x2 minus x1 total displacement divided by time. That is t2 minus t1. This is the average velocity. Now graphically, if you draw a line like that, A to B line like this and then complete a triangle this triangle you will realize one very interesting thing here that this distance is a right angle triangle altitude is basically displacement and the base is the time taken altitude is x2 minus x1 base is t2 minus t1 all right, so this value is altitude divided by the base, which is nothing but tan of the angle the line connects from A to B. This is theta. This should be equal to tan of theta. Okay, theta is what? Theta is angle, angle made by the line joining angle made by line joining a and b joining a and b with x axis fine so you can extend this line further 
even this angle is theta only. Okay, so all of you understand, everyone, tan of theta will be the average velocity graphically. All right. Let's talk about how graphically the instantaneous velocity looks like. Okay. Same curve I will take. This is X, this is T. This is the curve. Now at this point, I want to find the instantaneous velocity at that instant, okay? Then over here, you need to make sure that, you know, if I consider A and B, if I consider A and B, tan of this line is the average velocity between A and B, okay? Now if I bring B closer to that point, A over here, this will be A1, this will be B1, then tan of the average velocity between A1 and B1 is the average velocity between A1 and B1. Now, if A1 and B1 comes very close to that point, very, very close, can I say that then average velocity between A1 and B1 is actually the instantaneous velocity at that point? Can I say that? If A1 and B1 comes very close to this point, capital A, then the average velocity between A1 and B1 is the instantaneous velocity of that point. All of you understand? Prana, what I'm asking you, just answer that first. Everybody understand? Okay, so now if I bring the A1 and B1 very close to A, and then connect A1, B1, it will become tangent. It will become tangent. Fine. So graphically, graphically instantaneous velocity is tan theta of the tangent at that point. Fine. So instantaneous velocity is the tangent. is the tan of angle made by tangent at that point. Fine. So this is how graphically average velocity and instantaneous velocity looks like. Fine. How do we know angle of the tangent? That is a different issue. Okay, that when you solve problems, you'll understand later on. Okay, and uh, if you know already dy by dx is what? Very small, so not dy by dx. In this case, it will be dx by dt. This is actually tan of theta. dx and dt are very small. It is like you're bringing x2 and x1 very close to each other, t2 and t1 very close to each other. So if you know how to take derivative, then just differentiate, you'll get the value of tan theta directly. Understood, Nishant? And there are other ways also. The thing is that you have to take tan of angle and there are hundred ways to find out the angle getting it all you have to know is whether you are aware of those or not there can be using coordinate geometry graphically you can find out the angle you can be very careful with pen paper and scale you draw the tangent find out the angle and then find the tan of that angle okay there are many ways all right, so let us take few questions on whatever we have done just now.
I hope it is visible clearly. All right, so the answer, some of you already got the answer. Others also solve. Answer is two times the radius. Okay. So basically, you know, uh, again, keep your uh, thought process clear. Let's say the person starts from here in a server path of radius uh, R and one revolution it completes in 40 seconds, one revolution. So in two minutes, 20 seconds, how many seconds are there? 120 plus 20, that is 140 seconds. 140 seconds can be written as 40 into three plus 20. So basically it makes three full revolution. Full revolution doesn't add anything. You're back to the same point three times. And then after that, there is one half revolution also. So you're back to here point three times and then you are here. From point A, you've gone to point B. Displacement is basically shortest distance between the starting and end point. So this will be the displacement, which is two times the radius. Got it? All right, next one. Uh, no, I'll put a poll. Many people are giving different, different answers. All of you attempted. Done, all of you? Okay. Here is the poll. All of you, please take it. Hmm, so here 
is the outcome? The correct answer is C, C for cat. All right, so again, here you need to analyze it properly. A wheel of one meter rotates forward. It rotates forward. Uh, half a revolution on a horizontal ground and the magnitude of displacement of a point of wheel initially in contact with the ground. So this point, which was in a contact with the ground earlier, after half the revolution, will reach where? If it is full revolution, it will be again back to the bottom. Now it will reach the top half the revolution. Getting it? So this was the earlier point P and this is the final point P. Fine. Displacement is that, dis sorry. Displacement is that distance. Okay. Now that distance, how to find? You drop a perpendicular here. All right. This distance, base distance, P to Q. This distance is how much? Base one? How much it is? One full revolution, it will travel 2 pi r distance. Half revolution, it will travel pi r distance. So this is pi times r. And p to q distance is 2 r. So this distance, let's say this displacement, s, will be equal to root over pi r square plus 2 r square. Fine. R is 1, so pi square plus 4. So like this, you do this question. Okay. Again, the level of questions will not be your class 9th level. Okay. Level of question will be slightly difficult than what you have learned already. So don't expect that same chapter will have same level of questions. So you need to learn, you know, these are like basic questions. Whatever we have done just now, these are you, they don't even qualify for basic competitive exams, but still we, we are doing it because we are learning things right now. All right, let's take up next few. You can answer one by one. Okay, first one people have answered. That's fine, Shashwat. Yes, the option B is correct for the first. Particle covers half the circle of radius R. Distance will be pi R and displacement will be 2R, it will be on the diametrically opposite end, right? When it covers half the circle. Second one, quickly. What is the answer? 
you getting people are answering different pick one option all right so yes most of you are correct answer is a okay how to solve this one person goes 10 meter north let's say like this 20 meter to the east this is 10 this is 20 displacement will be this much so that is root over this is not motion in 1d it's like combination of two motions both are in a straight line actually this question should not be there but it's fine so this is 10 root 5 okay this is the answer now you might be wondering whether 10 root 5 is 22.5 or 25.5 just square it 25 square is 625 so if this is less than 625 square of that the answer is a or you find out square root square root you know how to find out next question okay many of you have already answered Okay. Correct. So the answer is A over here. How to solve this? Car moves half of its time at eighty kilometer per hour. Rest half at forty kilometer per hour. The distance covered is sixty. What is the average speed now? we have this habit of taking average right in these kind of questions always stick to the formula formula for the average speed is total distance by total time since it is going along a straight line only average speed and average velocity both are same because everything is going along the same straight line in the same direction so stick to the formula use your imagination to solve the question not to invent a formula so total distance 60 divided by total time taken total time taken is what uh t plus t so this will be 60 divided by 2t fine now we need to find out what is t how to get that we know that 80 into t plus 40 into t should be equal to 60 fine so t will be equal to half 1 by 2 hours just substitute here we we'll get the answer okay in this case the average of 80 and 40 is also 60 fine but then it is not always because the times are equal it comes out to be same but if i tell you 3 fourth of the time it travels 80 km per hour 1 fourth it travels with 40 km per hour then the answer is not 80 plus 40 by 2 okay the answer will be 60 divided by uh can you do it yourself let us see let's say it travels uh Three fourth of the time, three fourth of its time like this, and rest of the time it travels with forty kilometer per hour. So, what is the average velocity now?
70. All of you are getting 70. So now you can see that it's not the average. Right? So now you have to write something like this that uh, total distance is 60. 60 divided by 3 fourth of the time plus 1 fourth of the time, which is t only. 60 by t. Here I have assumed total time to be t. Here I had assumed total time to be 2t. So I have taken t and t for half of times. Okay, anyways, so 60 by t and 3t by 4 into 8t plus t by 4 into 40 is equal to 60. So from here you get the value of t, which is substitute here and you'll get the answer. Okay. All right, next set of question last before we start the next topic. This one. First one, what is the answer, all of you? Everyone? No Shashwa, just check once what you have done. Use a formula. Formula you have to use. Then all of you, the answer is D. D for Delhi. Okay. Again, it is uh, total distance by total time. So first, let's say distance is this much, then that much. So travels half the distance, let's say S by two, and this is also S by two. So to total distance is S, S divided by total time. Time for the S by two is S by two divided by V1. For the second half, the time is S by two divided by V2. So you will get it as 2v1 v2 divided by v1 plus v2. Okay, harmonic mean. Fine, do this next one. Yes, Aditya, that's correct. Anurag, that's correct. Which option, Aritra? Okay, you need to just tell me once. If you keep on typing multiple times, same thing, you know, it doesn't go down well. Yes, Hariharan. Siddhant? No. Yes, Pranav. There are two Pranavs, is it? We have two Pranav. Pranav Dharma Gudi and Pranav. Oh. There was one more Pranav. I think he is absent today. Anyways, so yes, the option is B. Most of you have got it correct. Fine. 
ratio of numerical values of average velocity to the average speed average velocity is what total displacement by total time average speed is total distance by total time okay displacement will always be less than or equal to distance because it is shortest distance between the two points so that's why average velocity will be less than or equal to the average speed when it will be equal to average speed what should happen when it will be equal to the both the things will be equal the average velocity and average speed when they will be equal straight line and in the same direction also straight line and in the same direction fine then only all right guys so this is just a section a small part of the chapter that talks about the uniform motion now let's talk about the accelerated motion also and that is the bigger section of the chapter write down okay accelerated motion with respect to motion in 1d we are talking about okay so can the direction of the velocity change in the motion in 1d can it change can direction change in motion in 1d it can change right it can move forward and then backwards also fine so the acceleration can be there in two different ways acha by the way uh, the definition of acceleration i always you know i start assuming sometime that you have done in ninth but i'll do it again acceleration write down acceleration is basically rate of change of velocity with time now when i say rate of change of velocity do i mean only the rate at which uh, direction is change the, the magnitude is changing or can i say rate at which direction also changes that also creates acceleration pranav left kya pranav dharmagadi hey stop typing message ha huh? pranav what do you think all right so rate of change of velocity with time is the acceleration fine now mathematically how to write the acceleration acceleration is basically v2 minus v1 their vector difference okay v2 minus v1 is you are adding it sorry you are subtracting it vectorially it is difference between two vectors divided by 
delta t okay this is called the average acceleration this is average acceleration all right now in motion in 1d in motion in 1d what will happen is that uh, you know everything will be along one straight line and direction you take care with sign this way it will be positive that way it will be negative so you need not include lot of concepts from the vectors you can handle it one direction take positive other negative and then take the difference you'll get the average acceleration fine there is a concept of instantaneous acceleration also instantaneous acceleration which can be delta v by delta t where delta t tends to zero okay this will be equal to dv by dt okay this is the acceleration all of you have understood probably now let us see the graphical interpretation of it how does it look like graphically so on the y axis you have let's say velocity on the x axis you have time fine so suppose this is the motion of a particle can you describe it a bit anyone what is happening here it is decelerating there is a deceleration happening okay you can see that initially the velocity is almost constant from here you need to you know think in a very open uh, mind from here to here no change of velocity okay i am talking about the uh, motion in a straight line so there is no change of velocity is there an acceleration initially no no acceleration then velocity increases from that point and it increases faster and faster right so acceleration is growing right from initial point to the final point acceleration is continuously increasing okay can this line become steeper than vertical line this is what kind of acceleration this is if it become perfectly vertical how much is this acceleration from here to here what is the acceleration it is infinite infinite acceleration okay in almost no time its velocity can suddenly increase fine so there will be a constraint in velocity time graph that it can't be steeper than the vertical line fine no matter what you do so suppose i need to represent graphically the average acceleration same thing uh, no difference this is let's say uh, a this is b average acceleration can be represented as sorry can be represented as tan of the angle this chord makes fine tan of this angle okay how it is coming you can see here
again a right angle triangle is created this distance on the graph is v2 minus v1 from here this distance is t2 minus t1 this angle is also theta tan of theta is v2 minus v1 divided by t2 minus t1 so average acceleration graphically is the uh, tan theta of the angle made by the chord what do you think instantaneous acceleration will be graphically everyone what it will be the angle made by the tangent tan of that angle right correct so all of you are now experts of the graphs so this is velocity time suppose it is like this i want to find the instantaneous acceleration at a point then i have to draw a tangent and i have to find out what is this angle tan of that angle is the acceleration which is also equal to derivative of velocity versus time at that point okay so if velocity is given as equal to 2 t square dv by dt is 4t so suppose at this moment t equal to 4 seconds so acceleration will be 4 into 8 38 meter per second square so like that you can identify the acceleration i hope everything is clear crystal clear no doubts anything anything all right so let's proceed further so you know we are only done with you can say a 5 to 10% of the theory in this chapter and your knowledge of class 9th was up till here so whatever was in class 9th everything uh, is covered more or less okay we have to just introduce equations of motion also then whatever you knew till now will be covered and then uh, we'll be going beyond it so uh, again coming back to the uh, accelerated motion i'll just graphically give you few situations you tell me whether you understand the graphs properly so that analysis becomes easier this is x and this is t what is happening here you need to describe it single word answers are useless velocity starts positive retards until some negative value very good correct so initially the velocity is positive how do you know velocity is positive initially how do you know how do you know velocity is positive because x is increasing initially the value of x is increasing it is going in the positive x direction you can see when it is going from this point to that point the value of x has increased isn't it so the value of x is increasing so we can say that the velocity is positive till where it is positive till where from here till the topmost point from a to the topmost point the peak of it the velocity is positive and then the value of x starts decreasing so from b to let's say point c its velocity is negative because x is decreasing it is going in the opposite direction so 
uh, on a piece of paper, you can draw it like this. The velocity is like this, and then it takes a turn and comes back. Okay, this is how it is. First velocity is positive, and then velocity becomes negative. I hope this situation is very clear to everyone now. Can you identify a point where velocity is zero? At the peak, don't confuse it with projectile motion. It looks like a projectile. <laughs> so don't confuse it with that. So the topmost point, the velocity is zero. What is the reason? Topmost point, the velocity is zero. What is the reason? No. What is uh, velocity, by the way? Velocity is tan of? Velocity is tan of angle the tangent makes with the x-axis. So how much, how much is the angle this tangent is making with the x-axis? What is the angle that this tangent makes? Zero degrees? So tan of zero is what? Tan of zero is zero. Okay. You need to also know that tan of theta will be greater than zero for theta between zero and 90 degrees. Okay. And tan of angle theta will be less than zero if theta is more than 90 less than 180 okay so these things better if you remember it okay now here the angle made by the tangents with the x-axis in this zone angle is acute this is the angle fine whereas angle made by the tangent in that zone is obtuse This is the angle, fine. You always take this angle. You don't take this one, okay? So the tangent is going like this. It changes the orientation slopes over and goes down, down like that. So angle is zero at the top, okay? Zero or you can also say that uh, zero or 180 and then it goes like that. Fine, so I hope this is clear to you and you can say that the velocity when it goes from A to B, the magnitude of velocity is decreasing or increasing? The velocity is increasing or decreasing? Velocity increases. This angle theta from A to B becomes zero. It is decreasing. No, you can't say constantly decreasing. You never know constantly or non-constantly. You're assuming it. Just decreasing. Fine. So till point B, till point B, the velocity actually decreases. At point B, velocity becomes zero. And then velocity becomes more and more negative. More and more negative. Okay. So can I say that this is a case of deceleration, continuous deceleration? Between A and B, deceleration or not? Between A and B, deceleration, okay? Between B and C also it is deceleration only. The magnitude of velocity is increasing, but Deceleration is the acceleration opposite of the initial velocity. After some time, velocity will become in the direction of deceleration only. Then it will keep on increasing. Okay, so downward, downward opening curve will always be represented as deceleration. You write down somewhere, 
that this is the negative acceleration. Okay, this is how you represent deceleration in XT graph. Okay. Now, same way, this one, same way, this one is what? No, Anurag. Oh, that way you're saying that you're throwing some ball like that and then it comes like, yeah, you can say that, correct. This one, A, B, C. Now you can see here that right now velocity is negative, the slope is negative fine then the velocity becomes zero at point b just like in the earlier case and then velocity becomes positive over there because angle is between zero and 90 okay so you can see here that acceleration is always in the positive direction because finally the positive direction, the uh, positive direction, the, velo uh, the velocity has been reached. So acceleration you can say is positive here. If you say negative acceleration is deceleration, then you must say that positive acceleration is acceleration. Okay. All right. So just one more graphical thing. Now what we are doing is numerical only. So this is not part of any theory as such, but I know that uh, there will be a struggle if you don't understand these things. So let's say this is, no, 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 it need not be constant acceleration. Do not confuse it. It depends on what kind of curve it is. Okay, it depends on what kind of curve it is. All right, listen here, everyone. Suppose you have a situation like this and like that. This is object one, that is object two. Okay, can you describe their motion compared to each other? What is happening? Will these two object meet after some time? These two objects will meet after some time or not? They'll meet. Ajah, if two object meet at a point, then what should be same? What is the condition one object meets the other? What should be the same? Time should be same and what else? Bhai, position should be same, na? location. Just because velocities are equal, does it mean that they will be meeting at a point? Two objects are going somewhere. One goes like this, other is going 50 kilometers away. Both of their velocities are equal. Does it mean that they meet? No, right? Their location should be same at the same time. Does that information this graph gives? It doesn't give that information. So you can't infer it. You can't say 
that object two has overtaken object one. You cannot just by looking at this. Okay, what you can say is object one starts from rest. Object two has some initial velocity. What else you can say? Anything else? Object one starts from rest. Object two has initial velocity. What else? Object one has greater acceleration. How can you say that it has greater acceleration? This angle is more than that angle. So tan of greater angle will be greater. So object one has greater acceleration compared to object two. Getting it? Clear to all of you? And that's all we can infer. That's all. Shashwat, that is a wrong statement. First acceleration is moving at faster pace. When you say pace, pace always means velocity. Don't say pace with respect to acceleration. Okay, can I say that object one is behind object two? Can I say that? I cannot say. But if object one is behind object two, then object one will overtake object two after some time. That time you cannot determine looking at the graph. This is not the time when they will meet. This is the time when their velocities are equal. That's all. Okay. So quickly few conclusions then we'll move ahead. If it is a constant velocity, how the xt graph looks like xt graph constant velocity straight line straight line the good thing about the straight line is that you know the slope of the tangent at every point is that straight line only. Okay, so straight line is a constant velocity. This one is constant velocity. Constant acceleration in velocity time graph, how it will be? Straight line, right? A straight line like this. Okay. Now can I extend this line further? What does it mean? Okay. Can you describe the motion for this situation? Object started going backwards. Fine. You can see that velocity is positive here and then it became negative. So it is going in this way, velocity became zero and then started going backwards. But on graph, you can see that it looks like one continuous one straight line. Fine. So yeah, sometimes graph will be not so intuitive also. This is constant acceleration. Okay, now let us see how displacement can be identified from VT curve, V and T curve. Okay. Acha, there is always this confusion, acceleration or deceleration. Sir, it is acceleration or deceleration. Okay. Just throw this thing from your head that acceleration and deceleration are two different things. Okay, deceleration is also an acceleration only, but negative. 
okay so always keep that in your head but sometime in question if they say deceleration just take it as negative take it as in opposite direction of initial velocity that's all it is also an acceleration but in opposite direction don't confuse yourself yeah yeah that is fine in second case it is negative acceleration because slope is negative but it is acceleration only okay so i was talking about displacement write down finding out the displacement from this okay suppose you're going like this this is velocity this is time all right and you have reached till a point where time this time is t equal to t not okay so what is the total displacement mathematically what should i write displacement in this case will be what constant velocity this is so v into t not v into t not so graphically how does it represent it area of the graph right v into t not is the area under vt graph okay so area under vt graph is the displacement now we have identified that is true for constant velocity what if velocity is not constant let us say it is like this it's going like this this is velocity and this is time can you prove that the displacement in this case also is the area under this curve can you try proving that try proving it you don't need any integration or anything like that done right hari haran okay fine so i think uh, you have covered little bit in mathematics also if you take very very small width of time let's say this width is very small let's say delta t okay so can i say that area of this is represented by the displacement in delta t this zone 
can be considered to be a straight line horizontal straight line so i'll say that for delta t time the velocity is almost constant only so v into delta t is the displacement in delta t time displacement in delta t time like that i can keep on adding all the displacements if all these displacements if i make smaller smaller rectangles like that i can keep on adding them and i'll get total displacement yes or no so total displacement will become equal to the area of graph here also area of graph here also is the displacement okay so remember these basic things uh, have you done this in class 10th sorry class 9th whatever we have just done okay all right no problem so we are going to start the next section of the chapter which is equations of motion okay write down so you know that we are doing the graphical part and the algebraic part together i'll again show you the classification which we have done we are doing algebraic and graphical analysis together calculus approach will be doing at the end fine and there is one more actually small topic which is relative velocity that also will be doing uh, at the end write down equation of motion now equation of motion if acceleration is zero is very straight forward isn't it uh, velocity into time is distance average velocity is total distance by total time only these two equations are there and it is simply you can find out you don't need to worry much about it so that case we are all we have already done in a way so case number 1 acceleration is zero that is manageable case number 2 acceleration is constant constant acceleration okay let us see how we can deal with this scenario acha by the way uh, these equations of motion you you already know right so what these equations of motion let you find out i mean why this these are important why these equations of motions all three of them why are they important so important anyone okay fine so basically why the equations of motion all of you are correct only the way you are saying but the clarity is missing little bit so equations of motion actually helps us helps us find out future in future what will happen based on present scenario okay based on what is happening right now you can predict what will happen in future 
that is very powerful tool right because future you haven't seen so you can just modify the present variable you will be knowing how much it will impact in future what is the impact of it later on so if you change the acceleration you know what will be the final velocity if you change the initial velocity you know after 5 second what will be the effect in the displacement so things like that so basically equations of motion are always write down it always applied between between two points in time so before you even think of applying equation of motion you should first think between which two points you are applying the equation because you always need two point initial and final okay so initial and final sometime will be given in the question itself that initially this happens and finally that happens but at times between initial and final you can have any number of initial and final what i am trying to say is suppose initial time is t equal to 0 finally what happens is t equal to 10 seconds okay so you can say that my initial is 0 final is t equal to 1 second my initial is t equal to 2 second final is t equal to 5 second so between a and b you can any two points you take and you can connect them by using velocity acceleration time and displacement so four variables you can use to connect the two points in time so that is the importance of the equation of motion fine so now uh, let us consider case number 2 graphically where acceleration is constant is this a plot of constant acceleration between a and b it is a plot of constant acceleration right and yeah on the y axis velocity on the x axis like always time usually time is always on the x axis velocity time graph yes okay and <clears throat> and it has initial velocity also at point a at point a let's say initial velocity is u fine at point b the initial velocity is let's say v rather than writing a and b let's write 1 and 2 it in clarity 1 and this is point 2 okay you need to tell me if let's say from here to here time is t okay let's say t is a time you need to tell me the total displacement the object had okay from point 1 to point 2 all of you graphically it is represented by the area right so find out that area how will you find it it's a trapezium you can as well divide it into a rectangle and a triangle that is also fine just find the area area will be the displacement we have just learned about it this is let's say area 1 this is area 2 displacement will be graphically equal to sum of these two areas a1 plus a2 what is a1 equals to ut this is s a2 is what half of base is t altitude is what this much is v minus u right so v minus u 
a into t this is the equation all right this is the uh, equation of motion itself no problem with it but sometimes the constant acceleration is given let's say acceleration a is given to us so can i use acceleration in this equation so if acceleration is given how do i write acceleration to be equal to a is equal to what between point 1 and 2 constant acceleration is a how to write a a is equal to what a is average acceleration is change in velocity divided by time this is what we have studied right so acceleration is v minus u divided by t so from here the first equation of motion you will get it as v is equal to u plus at anyone has any doubts till now anyone so from here you can see that v minus u is equal to a into t right so v minus u is equal to a into t that you use here and you write as equal to ut plus v minus u is at so it becomes at into t which is at square so you have eliminated the final velocity from this equation from this equation you eliminated final velocity and you have only s two equations of motion how these two equations of motions are different with each other in first equation there is no displacement term okay there is no displacement in the first equation in the second equation there is no velocity getting it i want you to derive the third equation of motion in which there is no t so find out that i mean you know the what it is derive it find out eliminate the value of t substitute the value of t from the first one on the second one you'll get it Let me know once you're done. done so just substitute the value of t to be v minus u by a in that equation you will be able to find out that v square equal to u square plus 2 a s fine this is the equation you have three equation of motion remember that these three equations of motions are vector equations fine so if they are vector equations you need to take care of the directions as well and how you take care of the directions everyone how we take care of the directions by using signs the component you will have to use in motion in 2d motion in 2d only cos theta sin theta will come but here everything is along one straight line okay so if it is in one straight line that only in one direction or in opposite direction two options are there so one option is positive the other option becomes negative so by using the signs you can take care of the directions 
in motion in one day at least. Okay, I hope it is clear. So we'll take a break now, everyone. Or is there any doubt? Clear. So we'll take a break right now. It is six o two. We will meet at six seventeen. Oh ho! Oh, sorry, four o two. Usually I have class from four to seven thirty. So I give them break at six. So psychologically, I have just saved two hours. Huh? This is your break.
all right guys so i hope all of you are back are you able to hear me all right what happened arnav what happened anyways all right so let us continue from where we have left we have just derived the equations of motion three equations of motion graphically okay so since we are talking about derivation let us see how else can we derive them okay so i'm assuming the basics of derivatives and basics of integral you are aware of okay if not uh, you will be slowly anyway when we solve questions you will get used to it so acceleration is constant right so acceleration can be written as dv by dt okay so from here dv is equal to a dt have you done basics of integral everyone little bit of integral have you done in bridge program you have done bridge okay great uh, nice yeah yeah little bit only i require little bit only so akhil sir has done it very nice so let us continue so you can integrate this a is constant so left hand side i am going from initial velocity to the final velocity time is from 0 to t so what will be the integral of this how to integrate it further anyone are you able to see my screen clearly screen is visible shashwat uh, the problem is probably the internet speed at your end okay it's like youtube if if your speed is lesser the resolution goes down automatically so you can rejoin or you can see that somebody else if they uh, else is using the same broadband connection ask them not to watch videos on it then bandwidth will be more available for you all right so now you can take a out of the integral because a is constant fine so you will have integral of dv what it will be v only and then you substitute the limits v minus u upper limit minus lower limit this is equal to a into t from here v is equal to u plus at got it uh, you have done indefinite but there is a definite integral also you have to just simply put the limits for example over here integral of dv is v but if you have limits like u and v what you have to do is first substitute the upper limit in whatever integral you got minus the lower limit so this is how you substitute the limits when you integrate that is the only difference between the definite and indefinite as far as physics is going okay so all of you have understood this one all of you understood please type in quickly and then i'll go forward okay so v is equal to u plus at how u is constant or it changes everyone is u a constant initial velocity arno i can't make everybody wait for 2 3 minutes na then you watch the recordings let's move forward you can anyways watch the recordings is u a constant or not initial velocity u is constant right v 
is the velocity which depends on the time whichever time you are finding out fine so i can write velocity v as dx by dt yes or no everyone right so dx will be equal to u dt plus at dt now you integrate this u is constant comes out of integral like this 0 to t 0 to t and let's say 0 to x all of you do this and let me know what what you get let me know are you getting ut plus half at square all right so integral of dx when x goes from 0 to x is x only integral of u dt is ut and at dt integral is half a t square like this fine see t dt integral is t square by 2 then you put the limits 0 to t so it will be t square by 2 minus 0 and then you know you just eliminate t from these two equations you will also get v square equal to u square plus 2as fine so we can derive the same expression by using the by using calculus or by uh doing it graphically also all right now is the uh main part knowing the equation is not enough knowing the equation is just 2% of the work 98% is how to solve problem okay so now we have known that there are three equations of motion constant acceleration there are three equations of motion so we'll be taking the constant acceleration scenario and see how we can utilize these three equations so can you tell me the most common case of constant acceleration common case of constant acceleration everyone gravity any object near to the earth surface right any object near to the earth surface and it is experiencing only gravity force let us say only gravity force is been exerted on it no other force then it is a constant force so constant acceleration fine so motion under gravity is a constant acceleration case and we have done it in projectile motion also that was much more complicated than this straight line motion so how will be the motion in straight line when it is we then when we are talking about the gravity everyone how does it look like give me one scenario in which motion in a straight line happens when it is under gravity when you drop a ball when you throw a ball up when you throwing the ball down okay in all the cases the acceleration will be constant and it is motion in a straight line okay fine so let us solve 
questions now because that is what the mechanics is all about mechanics is not about theory so let us take few questions i'll be giving you questions now write down train is traveling right now with 20 meter per second okay this is the velocity of the train it takes a u turn u turn in 20 seconds without changing its speed without changing speed so in this process of taking a u turn what is the average acceleration find out what is the average acceleration in this process of taking the turn sorry straight line everything is straight line whenever i give a question here it is straight line only okay and train will be traveling in a straight line usually right anyways usually i mean it can take a curved path also okay no u turn need not be straight line it can take a turn like that and take a curve bend and then finally it is back all right so i can see some of you have got zero also as answer is velocity changing or not has velocity changed speed is not changing has velocity changed velocity has changed So there should be acceleration if velocity is change there should be acceleration i am talking about average acceleration what is the definition of average acceleration final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time okay now here it takes full 20 second for completing the u turn final velocity if you take the initial velocity v1 to be equal to 20 meter per second what do you think final velocity is v2 is what 20 only minus 20 it changes the direction it changes the direction direction is accounted by the sign of the value okay so v2 is minus 20 minus of v1 again minus 20 divided by t which is 20 so you are getting it as minus 2 meter per second square okay this is the answer i hope it is clear to everyone it is not zero acceleration is not change in speed by time change in velocity by time direction taken into account all right next one is this particle is moving with uniform acceleration uniform acceleration okay from a to b along a straight line it has a velocity of v1 and v2 at a and b respectively fine c is the midpoint midpoint between a and b you need to find out velocity v3 at point c how much it will be
No, that's not correct. No. Anything you do, anything. They, there might be multiple ways you solve the problem. It is not like your class 9th and 10th. Fine? There are multiple ways. So, you have to keep your mind open about it and see how will you approach. Okay, I can see a few of you have answered. Um, multiple answers people are giving. Fine. I'll solve it now. I'll solve it. Let's say, uh, you know, you do not know the distance between A and B, but what you do know, point C is midway. So you need to use that information. Okay. So let's say, if you have to use the information, you need to assume the distance is X and then C is X by two from A. A to B is X and this is X by two. And this is point C, fine. So I can say here that V2 square is equal to V1 square plus 2ax. This is my first equation. So expression remains constant throughout. A to C, C to B, A to B, everywhere. And I can say that V3 square is equal to V1 square plus 2ax by 2. Okay. So uh, from equation number 2, I can write down V3 square is equal to V1 square plus A into X plus A into X. Now, if I multiply by 2 throughout, I'll get this. And the first equation was anyway V2 square equal to V1 square plus 2AX. And then I subtract these two equations. 2AX is gone, which is not known. Getting it? So you get the answer of V3 to be equal to root over V1 square plus V2 square divided by 2. Anyone has any doubts here? Quickly type in. All right, so let's move forward. All right, next question. Uh, hmm. This one. An object moving with constant acceleration. Constant acceleration is A. Okay. Initial velocity is U. You need to find out the distance traveled, distance traveled in nth second of the journey. Nth second of journey. So you need to find distance traveled in one second only, but that one second is the nth second. Fine. So how much distance this object travels in the nth second? Okay. At t equal to zero, its velocity is u. Find out.
Anurag, I am not asking formula here. Formula, I know. I am asking you to derive it in a way. No, no, no. That is sorry, Anurag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is that is what when you say that distance is equal to u n plus half a n square. All of you, tell me what this imply what does it mean what is this s right now distance traveled this is the distance from t equal to 0 to t equal to n seconds total distance it is i am asking you to find out at nth second of journey what is the distance and that second is what? Between which time and which time? Anyone? Right. Suppose I want you to find out the uh, distance traveled in the fifth second of the journey. Fifth second. What it will be? Distance traveled till... Distance traveled till 5 seconds minus distance traveled till 4 seconds. Is that the distance traveled in 5th second? Is that the distance traveled in 5th second? Distance traveled, this is nth, at nth second, till n second, this is a distance, okay, till n second, till n minus 1 second, what is the distance, u into n minus 1 plus half a n minus 1 whole square, so can I say that sn is this is a distance traveled till n second. So distance traveled in the nth second. Can I say it is Sn minus Sn minus 1? Is this correct? All of you should answer. Can you find out how much it is? Hold on. Wait. Hold on a second. Tell me that fifth second starts from t equal to what? t equal to 5 till Sorry, t equal to 5th second, 5th second of journey starts from t equal to 4 to t equal to 5, right? It's the 5th second starts after 4th second is over. So, then it will continue till 5th second gets over. Okay, so this is 1 second gap. So, that is why SNS will be equal to this. All of you quickly tell me what is the answer? Rearrange the term and tell me what it is. All of you. Are you getting this? Uh, U plus half A 2N minus 1. All of you, are you getting this? Correct. So, if you are getting this, this is what it is. So, some people consider this itself as the fourth equation of motion. Fine. So, you can treat it as if it is another equation of motion apart from the three equations which you already know. Fine. 
so for example this particular question which i am giving you you can solve only by using this particular formula okay no doubts right all of you have understood this one everyone okay here is the question guys the question is a body covers a distance of 20 meters 20 meters is covered in 7th second okay 24 meters is covered in 9th second you need to find out how much distance it will cover distance covered in 15th second all are just one second time periods but which one second they are that is different do it okay some of you already answered answer is correct those who have answered till now are correct no siddhan check the silly errors you have done probably direct application of formula s n f is U plus half a two n minus one. Use that. A is not known. U is not known. So from first two conditions, get the value of U and A, and then use it in the third. All right. See the answer is thirty six. Okay. no shortcuts nothing no nonsense okay uh, you can apply ap gp hp but there should be proper logic a solid logic do not do not look at the answer and then say that oh i can take geometrical progression okay even if that may result in the correct answer but if there is no logic then that is useless okay it will destroy your logics when you write in the exam all the exam when you write if you start assuming lot of such things it will never be clear in your thoughts so you will not i mean forget about j advance then j advance is then out of picture forget about it j mains you can do little bit here and there if you start assuming why i am telling you all of you right up front because once you start developing this habit starting started to assume creating your own laws and rules you uh, you you be filled up with lot of nonsense in your head then uh, what will become more important is throwing these nonsense from your head away rather than putting something new in your head okay so these nonsense will start destroying your chances keep your head clear i have not taken anybody's name don't worry so s n h is u plus half a 2n minus 1 right so using the first condition 20 is equal to u plus half a uh, 
minus 1, 13. Second condition, 24 should be equal to u plus half a, uh, 2 times 18 minus 1, 17. Okay, what I want is s, which should be equal to u plus half a, 15, uh, 2, uh, 29, right? 29. I want this. Okay, so just solve this equation, get the value of u or a. And then substitute here, you'll get the answer. Or if you have a better way of solving the equation, directly getting the value of this expression itself, then that is different. Okay. So if you rearrange U and A such that it becomes this, then left hand side will be the answer. Okay. But if that is not possible, get the value of U and A and substitute here. Right. All right. So let's move forward. Now, next thing is. Motion under gravity. Motion under gravity is another example of constant acceleration only. So we'll solve four or five questions on it. All right, so here is the thing. Once you have attended the bridge program, you'll find out this chapter very, very simple. Okay. So let's say you are throwing an object from here. This distance, the height of the building is 100 meters. Okay, you're throwing an object with 10 meter per second upwards. You need to find out when it goes up and then when it comes down, it reaches the ground, how much time it will take to reach the ground, all of you. Take GS10. No, no, it is not projectile motion. Projectile motion will be curved. It's motion in a straight line. It goes up in a straight line, comes down. But yeah, the way you solve it, very similar to the projectile. One answer I've got, others. Which equation will you be using? S equal to ut plus half a t square you'll use, right? Because displacement is given to you, initial velocity is given to you, and you're asked what is the value of t. This, what is the value of S? What is S? In this case, what is your initial point and final point? Which two point you're taking, initial and final? This is your initial point, and this is your final point. Between these two points, what is the displacement? Which direction you're taking positive? 
अप और डाउन अप सो डिस्प्लेसमेंट इज माइनस हंड्रेड यू ऑल फॉरवर्ड प्रोजेक्टाइल है डिस्प्लेसमेंट इज माइनस हंड्रेड बिटवीन आई एन एफ इट कैन गो अप टू एनी हाइट बट इट हैज वेन इट कम्स डाउन डिस्प्लेसमेंट इज माइनस हंड्रेड ओनली ओके यू इज वॉट What's u? U is plus ten. Ten t plus a is what? Minus ten into t square. Okay. So this will give you the answer for t. This will create a quadratic equation. You will get it as five. T square minus ten t minus hundred is equal to zero, and then uh, simplify it further. T square minus two t minus twenty is equal to zero. So this is the quadratic equation you'll get. Solve this, you'll get the answer. Okay, and uh, yes, sometimes we have this tendency that oh, it goes up, then comes down. so i am sure some of you have done like this they like okay fine i'll take first between this point and that point let's call it as g i'll first write down i to g how much time it takes then g to f what is the time total time will be t1 plus t2 some of you ha might have tried like this you can do like that also you'll get the correct answer but why you're complicating it right As equal to u two plus half a t square, you can directly apply between initial and the final point. Getting it? Final answer you can solve this quad equation. Okay, that it will be. All right. Next up. Any doubts? Anyone? Anyone has any doubts? no doubts doubtless will proceed next question you are in a balloon like this balloon is moving up with acceleration of 2 meter per second square initially the balloon was at the ground okay after it is continuously accelerating 2 meter per second square upwards fine after 5 seconds after 5 second you have dropped a ball you need to find out how much time the ball will take to hit the ground Is Shashwat got something? Others?
All right. So some of you are getting root five as the answer. Let us see whether that is correct or not. Okay. Someone is getting root two also. Most of you are getting root five. Let us see. We'll solve it now. So tell me, tell me when I am, when I am dropping the ball while I am in a balloon. What will be the situation for the ball? Will it start from rest? The velocity, initial velocity of ball will be zero. What it, what will be the situation? Initial velocity of the ball will be zero. Everyone, type in yes or no. Initial velocity of the ball will be zero, right? Okay. Pull, pull, pull. Initial velocity of the ball is zero. Yes or no? Remember inertia? Inertia of motion? Okay, so here is the poll result. Initial velocity of the ball will not be zero. Okay, I mean, with respect to the person who is dropping it, that is zero. With this, suppose I am dropping it, I will feel as if I am dropping it from the rest. But in reality, it will move with my velocity. Whichever velocity I am going up with that velocity only, with that velocity only, the ball will move up. Fine. The situation is like this. Suppose there is a plane that is moving forward, right? You drop something, it will not have zero velocity. It, if it has zero velocity, it will drop vertically down. It has a velocity of aircraft. That is why it goes like that. Same thing here also. Okay. So, after five seconds, when I drop the ball, the velocity of the ball is the velocity of balloon. And velocity of the balloon is what? Use V is equal to U plus AT for the balloon. Acceleration is constant, two meter per second square. So velocity is two into five, 10 meter per second. This is the velocity of balloon. When I drop the ball, the ball has initial velocity of 10 meter per second upwards, okay? I need to find out what is the height balloon has achieved also, because this is what the ball will travel, okay? That you will get from S equal to UT plus half AT square for balloon. So H will be equal to UT zero plus half into two into T square, five square, which is 25 meters. Okay. So H is equal to 25 meters. Understood all of you? Okay. So this is related to what balloon is doing because there is a relation between what balloon does and what the stone will do. So that is why we first found out what the balloon will do before you drop the stone. Now stone is dropped. What is the acceleration of stone? Will it be same as balloon? Acceleration of stone will be how much? First tell me acceleration of balloon. Sorry, not the balloon, acceleration of the stone. How much? Acceleration of stone. 2 plus 10 minus 10, 2, what it is? When I have dropped the uh, stone, after dropping, what will be its acceleration? Okay, so here is the thing, guys. The inertia happens only for the velocity. It doesn't happen for the acceleration. As soon as I drop something, the acceleration will not be same. 
okay acceleration will be because of the force acting on that mass so when i have dropped the object it is under the gravity only and if only gravity force is applied acceleration is always g g is the acceleration downwards so i'll say acceleration is minus 10 meter per second square downwards velocity will be velocity of balloon but acceleration will not acceleration of balloon will not impact anything on acceleration of the stone because there is no such law you are creating laws yourself the law is only for the velocity an object that is moving with constant velocity will continue to do so until less an external force applied on it fine so as soon as you drop it immediately after it tries to move with the same velocity as the balloon there is no such law for the acceleration all of you clear that acceleration will be minus 10 meter per second squared uh, for the stone as soon as you have dropped it everyone please type in yes or no is it clear okay so somebody was asking me why the velocity of stone is 10 so i think i have repeated multiple times i'll tell again this is because of inertia when you drop something from moving station when you yourself are moving and you drop something immediately after dropping that object will try to move with the same velocity with which you yourself are moving so that is why the velocity initial velocity of the uh, stone which you are dropping is the velocity of the balloon which is 10 meter per second upwards getting it all right now we need to find t so what i will do i have the displacement 25 meters right so i'll use this s equal to ut plus half at square right so displacement is this is my initial point point number 1 final point point number 2 so between these two points i will be using the equation s equal to ut plus half at square s is minus 25 u is 10 so 10 into t this will be minus half into 10 into t square okay so this is 5 t square minus 10 t minus 25 is equal to 0 or further change it t square minus 2t minus 5 is equal to 0 so this is a quadratic quadratic equation and solution of this quadratic equation is the answer everyone has understood please type in yes or no let me know if there is any doubt quickly very important question this was clear okay i am going to the next question um let's take one graphical question suppose there is a plot between x and t okay and this is how the graph is all right so not like this exactly sorry about it okay take care whatever it is now suppose this is a point 1 point 1 this is okay you need to find out find out another point p on the graph another point 2 on the graph so that 
the average velocity average velocity between 1 and 2 is equal to instantaneous velocity at 2 do it no mathematics nothing just think you will get the answer think it in a straight forward manner done anyone anyone got it anyone should i do it now i think couple of you have got it already probably okay i'll do it so if i take the second point in such a manner that at that point the chord is tangent so the slope of this line is what instantaneous velocity at point number 2 because it is tangent at 2 this is also the average velocity between 1 and 2 because this is chord between 1 and 2 fine so you need to draw a tangent from point 1 to whichever point the tangent could be drawn so if it is tangent it is slope of that line is the instantaneous velocity at point 2 and slope of that line is also the average velocity between 1 and 2 clear i hope clear hari hari is it clear all right so let's go to the next graphical question you know there are uh, any guesses how many varieties of questions can be there <laughs> more than a million okay you can spend your entire life just mastering one chapter still when you are 90 year old i will give you a question you will not be able to solve so there is no limit up to which the difficulty can go so how will you know that a chapter is over from your side how will you ever know that you are done you can spend your entire life learning it right so it will not be like your class 9th and 10th that you should be able to get all the question then only the chapter is over if that is a mode the chapter will never get over so you should be able to solve no 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 that is not the mode pranav so you should have a it is a more of it is sense whether you have a sense of you whenever you are solving let's say if you solve 10 difficult question you are able to solve 8 out of them i am talking about uh higher order questions if you're solving 8 out of 10 correctly you should move ahead to the next chapter okay so that should be the mode all right
All right, so let's go to the next. Just draw this. On y-axis, we have velocity. On time axis, we have t, okay? This is t, 0, 2t. This is 20 seconds. The This end is 20 seconds. All right. Um, what else? Huh, velocity time graph is given as shown. Rate of acceleration and deceleration is same and it is equal to 15 meter per second square. Rate of acceleration and deceleration is same, which is this. Okay, if average velocity during the motion, average velocity is given, average velocity is how much? 15 meter per second. Okay, from t equal to 0 to 20 seconds. If the average velocity is 15 meter per second, you need to find uh, these things. The value of t, then maximum velocity, how much? And the distance traveled, distance traveled with uniform velocity with uniform velocity once you are able to get all the values then only tell me the answer So we should find maximum velocity. Hmm. Okay. Everyone, enough time is given now. Get the answer. Runa got something. Ajay, tell me one by one. What is the answer for the first part, everyone? Pranav, why are you repeating yourself? Everyone, what is the answer for the first part? Did not get? Okay. Uh, that is strange. Nobody is getting it. So average velocity is given as 15 meter per second. Average velocity you have to use. The answer for the first part is five seconds. Okay. Average velocity, total distance by total time. Total distance is what? The area of this. 
okay the area of that is the total distance so how to get that you will have half of half of see what is this distance this one this is what 20 minus 2t 20 minus 2t it is isn't it so sum of the parallel side 20 plus 20 minus 2t into distance into the distance between the two parallel side what is this distance everyone how to get that how to get that distance this one pranav uh, do it yourself the i have changed the value of acceleration it's not the same as given in the books anyways what is the distance between the parallel sides how to get that over here what is the value of velocity is that the distance between the parallel sides or not what is the velocity here how to get that v is equal to what we'll be using v is equal to u plus at a is given as 15 right so v is equal to 15 into t okay 15 into t fine so uh, pranav in the book it was given as a equal to 4 meter per second square if you use a equal to 4 meter per second square yes you will get t equal to 5 seconds but over here that is not the answer okay so this in hold on hold on this into 15 into t this is the area all of you understand this is the area right this is the area and this is the distance covered that divided by the total time total time is 20 this is equal to um 15 meter per second so anybody solve this what you get t equals to arno you are saying something so so what is the distance uh, on the first parallel and be 2t minus t which is t So, uh, you wrote twenty minus two t. Twenty minus two t, right? So from here to here it is t. From there to there it is again t only. Both are t. Because they have to maintain symmetry. They it stops finally here. So this is twenty minus two t. So and anybody solved it to get the value of t? Anybody? Uh, so what I did was I took the average velocity and I multiplied it into total time, and then I got total distance covered in doing that time, and then uh, no, no. I found the area under the graph and I uh, no. saw. No, if you use this acceleration, you'll never get t equal to five. Okay. So what is the value of t? Anybody solved it to get the value of t? try solving it and tell me what is the answer pranav now tell me what is the answer solve it sir i have a doubt ha tell me isn't uh, 20 seconds the same as 3t because t then t then another t i think you meant 4t because t then it's t to 2t so it's be 2t yeah, t to 2t, 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 2t is still 1 t T to T, T plus two T plus T is equal to twenty. अरे hold on, sorry, this this is not correct. Two T is a time from here to here. Okay, T is a time from here to here. It is marked. Okay, from oh. here to here two T. So total distance is twenty. So twenty minus two T. Um. Ah, so then twenty is four T. Then you get. 
t is equal to 4 seconds you just divide it by i'm sorry 5 seconds you divide it by the Ah. Anybody, yes, what is the answer? No, even this should be T, okay? They have you have to maintain symmetry. Even this should be T. Accessions ah. are same both sides. Ah. The amount so, of time it will take to go from here to here should be same as to go from there to there. This is T, this is also T. So so you get that is two T, so equal to T. So you get twenty is equal to three T. That's what you Yeah, so you get twenty by three. Uh, so, Hariharan, hold on. So, Hariharan, listen here. From here to here, 20? Yes, this sir. Much, this much is T? This yes, much sir. is T? So, remaining yeah. is what? They have given, no, the whole thing is 2T they have given, right? So, so you yes. want, want to get 2T plus T equals 20? Yes, sir. That's all. Want to get what? Uh, 2T plus T equals 20 seconds. Like, the, the, the different the individual yeah, times. Yeah, uh, correct, correct. 2T plus T equal to 20. So, I mean, that's nice. You directly get the value of T. So, yeah, T yeah. plus 2T is equal to 20. 20. So, T will come out to be 20 by 3. That is fine. Okay. So, tell me, how will you get maximum velocity? Where the maximum velocity will be? Which point? The topmost, uh, where the velocity is constant. So, this is this is the maximum velocity. On the graph, it is clearly visible that this is the maximum possible velocity, isn't it? Distance traveled by the, traveled in uniform velocity will be simply equal to whatever is the velocity multiplied by 20 minus 2t. Okay. So, how much time we have? We have five minutes. We can take another question. Okay. This one. All of you. Car accelerates from rest at a constant rate alpha. Okay. It accelerates from rest at a rate of alpha. Okay. For some time, for some time. And then after acceleration, after which it decelerates, then deceleration happens. Okay. Decelerates at a constant at a constant rate of beta to come to rest. Getting it? The total time is given as total time consumed is T seconds. Fine. You need to find out these things. Maximum velocity And the total distance covered. Total distance. Do it. What is the point of maximum velocity? Where it will be? First tell me that. Where it will be maximum velocity? Just before deceleration. Just before deceleration. Where the acceleration has stopped. Acceleration will keep on increasing its velocity. As soon as acceleration is gone, velocity will be maximum there. You have to find that.
you need to first understand what all things are given to you initial velocity is given final velocity is given in between acceleration is changing its magnitude so it will be better if you draw the graph velocity time graph this is how the graph will be right so from uh, from 0 to let's say t1 it accelerates from t1 to t2 it decelerates any doubts in the graph this is the maximum velocity now do it total time is given t you have to use that somehow so is maximum velocity alpha t plus alpha square t by beta minus alpha why are you announcing the answer you can just type it out everybody else is also doing it right type it out whatever answer you get put it on the message don't disturb others everybody see between a uh, point a and b constant acceleration between b and c again constant acceleration so you can use the equation of motion between a and b and then between b and c that is a hint total time is given to you right so if the time from here to here from there to there is t2 oh wait this is t okay so if this is t2 from here to here it will be t minus t2 this is t2 okay now can you do it on all right so here let us say this is the initial velocity so here the velocity is zero okay so let us try to see how we'll get the relation between a and b the relation will be velocity of point b let's say v okay so v square equal to u square no not u square v is equal to u plus at this i'll be using between a and b so v is equal to u is zero and acceleration between a and b is what alpha so alpha into t2 this is my first equation now between b and c i am using the same relation this one only now final velocity is how much everyone what is the final velocity final velocity is zero right so i'll be saying v is equal to zero u is equal to v only v minus now because this deceleration beta times what what should i write here t minus t2 t minus t2 okay see again there are few uh, whenever i ask something okay until is there is a discussion or there is a doubt from your side please do not speak then others why are others are attending classes if you tell the answer to everyone 
you should type it out arnav understood arnav have you understood yes sir i'll type i'll type it out now ah thank you for that just few seconds back only i told and again you you're doing the same thing all right so okay so now u is equal to now v is what v is alpha into t2 right so alpha into t2 minus beta t minus t2 now from here you get the value of t2 isn't it so t2 will come out to be equal to what t2 will come out to be beta t divided by alpha plus beta yes or no this t2 so how will you get maximum velocity just substitute over here alpha into t2 is the maximum velocity so v is equal to alpha beta divided by alpha plus beta into t i hope all of you have understood how we are solving it everyone understood type in quickly all right guys so you know uh, the the thing is that total distance you can just find the area under this area of that will be the total distance which will be half b part it will be half into base which is t into maximum velocity which is alpha beta divided by alpha plus beta into t so this is your distance altitude which is maximum velocity which you already found out half of that into the base so you get the maximum distance so total distance also fine all right guys so uh, we are done with the first part of the chapter and uh, you know there are still few things that are left from this chapter those few things i'll just tell you uh, relative velocity is one which is uh, which we haven't done yet and uh, the calculus we haven't done yet fine and yes we haven't done the variable acceleration cases also but these are the small topics it will get over in an hour or so theory part of it and next class we will be doing at least 2 hours of problem practice only problems so do you want higher order questions like advanced level questions or basic levels what what because today we haven't done any advanced level frankly we have been limited to mains neat or below that level also what do you want next class after we are done okay so what i'll do is that i'll mix it up 50% will be 50% logical reasoning shashwat will be i mean frankly speaking those are useless fine logical reasoning should be developed from solving questions if you solve question your logical reasoning should develop if you try to read it like a theoretical questions you're wasting your time okay you're wasting your time that is how frankly someone can tell you okay if someone is telling you that you can develop your logical reasoning by reading the books theory again and again that person is fooling you okay if somebody tells you there is a shortcut again you are getting fooled no shortcuts no uh, learning of theory all that is useless what you should do is that immediately after the class you should start solving questions don't try to just 
read the theory again whatever we have done okay start again reading the theory and from different books you keep on reading theory and just remember all the garbage in your head all that is going to be useless you need to develop problem solving aptitude how to think openly you, you can see in this question itself do you think that your knowledge of equation of motion has to do anything with solving this question no it has nothing to do with we are using v is equal to u plus at only right but someone will be able to solve this someone will not be able to solve this the only difference is that that someone who is able to solve this has done lot of problem practice without looking at the solutions directly so he has undergone lot of struggle frustration and able to develop the problem solving aptitude okay so i am not answering only to shashwat i have i am telling to everyone okay so make sure that you solve problems mark my words 95% of preparation is solving problem only 5% is th theory okay so guys that's it from my side uh, we will meet again next week and complete this chapter and uh, yes there will be assignment given to you that is the minimum possible work that you have to do as i told last class bye for now yes hari haran correct minus b minus beta did, did i write plus beta if yes then correct it